I knew a little bit about it because my teacher and film school, one of them was Edward Dimitrik, who was mm -hmm. the tenth of the ten, if the you will, the only the non writer. He was the director member of the ten. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew a little bit about it, but I wish I'd read Cook's book. Uh, and the new, there's a new biography called, uh, by Larry Sepler, which is also amazing. Yeah, I haven't read that used, one. And he I used a lot, read of that. Uh, a lot of Cook's book and then updated it. He's, it's actually excellent. It's co written by by uh, Chris Trumbo as well. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, it's really authentic. You know, I it's think so relevant. it's about this that period, but it's also about today because if you compare the fear of totalitarian communism, which was real, it was mm -hmm. I mean the threat was real, yeah. uh, to the fear of terrorists today, and, and obviously that's real. The mm -hmm. terrorism is a threat. But if you look at how politicians, uh, journalists, uh, people who have an agenda use fear to uh, extrapolate to some inner threat to mm -hmm. people that you know, people you want to accuse of, of being unpatriotic or less, less tapped into the fear than you are, so therefore they're they're less American, they're un-American. You know, I remember politicians saying, we're the real Americans uh, in the last election. You know, that use of fear it happens in history all the time. And, and I think, if I hope if the film does anything, it'll never change anything. But I hope it just gets people to ask, am I being manipulated by something mm -hmm. that's, you know, sort of related to what, you know, what I'm being asked to, to do or a change in opinion I'm being asked to make? Or, or is this is this authentic? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times it's a spell. You know, it's kind of like a spell that gets cooked up mm -hmm. with the, the same ingredients, history, uh, you know, mo same moments mm -hmm. in history, uh, same ingredients, different moment in history, uh, time and time again. I think of it as the channeling. Characters. I talk about it as yeah. like you have to channel. You can't. You have to let them take over your body, your persona, so that there's enough overlap uh, between that real life iconic person because mm -hmm. if it's just an impersonation you know that i love watching great impersonators mm -hmm. i loved watching tina fey do sarah palin yeah. but i also loved what julianne moore did for mm -hmm. for game change in this case you know to do john wayne uh to do john wayne like in a in a sense of impersonating him would have been a disaster because i needed an actor who would help give me access to what it might have actually felt like off camera, off stage, mm -hmm. to be facing off against Hedda Hopper. John mm -hmm. Wayne was tough on on these guys too, but Hedda was much tougher. Yeah. She, she, if, if Hedda Hopper, once a commie, always a commie. She, Hedda, Hedda had a personal she was, agenda. She had a personal agenda, and she, you know, even Charlie Chaplin. She basically got him deported and mm -hmm. fought her whole life to keep him out of the United States, and said even right before she died, "I hope you don't let Chaplin ever back in the country." But to pl to let people play, and Edward G. Robinson, Michael Stuhlbarg, also mm -hmm. playing a, a, a known iconic guy. Mm -hmm. By the way, that story is so heartbreaking because he can't escape. You know, I, I know, and, and I love that the complexity of that. But what I love what you and, and your cinematographer Jim Deneau did yeah. is you were dutching almost every shot with David and Helen that really helped bring out the grandeur and yeah. the larger-than-life essence yeah, yeah, of John yeah. Wayne. Yeah. It was beautiful. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I thought, yes, yeah, shooting up at, especially up at her, to give her the, the, the power that that she had. You know, she was she had 32 million readers, and she wasn't an extremist at those, in those days. She was tapped into a popular uh, sentiment. Something like 60% of Americans mm -hmm. thought we were already in World War III in 1950. So, you didn't get 32 million readers being some kind of uh, wingnut, you know, mm -hmm. as one would call with someone like that today, possibly. You got it by uh, understanding what the zeitgeist was worried about. She she wrote gossip, which she knew that would get her popular. She wore goofy hats that looked like centerpieces in a <laughs> dinner party. But she knew her public, and mm -hmm. she knew what they cared about. And... I love the way she says that, you know, I, those boys in Korea, who cares about these movie stars and their, and these, and their careers? These are boys, these men are sacrificing everything to die in Korea, get wounded in Korea, fight in mm -hmm. Korea. You know, she would trade one guy in Hollywood for one of those guys in a second. And that was a real sentiment, you know. So I tried not to have her be a, 
a kind of impersonation or a right. cartoon, and that's why you cast Helen Mirren because she can make anything even more layered than that yeah. it might have been otherwise. And it, she is just Helen is brilliant. I know, yeah, and I, I, I was joking about it, but I love that she knows how to wear hats. <laughs> the camera's also more, even more dynamic. The, the, rank, the dynamic range of the film mm -hmm. adjusts to the, the predicament that he's in. Life is becoming harder to control. He was a very controlled guy, Trump, mm -hmm. a disciplined guy. He, would, he worked insane hours, but as he you know, was doing so many scripts, not just his own, he was vouching for other people, so he would volunteer to rewrite other people's mm -hmm. scripts for no additional money for himself, just to help keep the black market going. So he wasn't sleeping, he was taking uppers to stay up and get up, and, and he was taking, uh, you know, drinking a lot and, and taking barbiturates to go to sleep. I mean, the poor guy was unraveling in a yeah. way. And so the, the camera work, I love the, my, some of my favorite stuff is during that scene with Louis C.K. and him in the study fighting over, mm -hmm. over uh, Trumbo's hypocrisies, you know, yeah. but he's getting busted by a close friend who's more pure mm -hmm. to the ideals, and uh, it's all it's all real, and also Arlen Hurd is getting sicker, so the, the camera is completely unhinged, it's, it's, and it's very mm -hmm. backlight, so every bit, of, every bit of dynamic range we could bring in, that's what's great about working with Jim, he comes at it from story first, mm -hmm. you know, not make a pretty, make a pretty picture, which is always mm -hmm. tempting in period films, to just make it look pretty mm -hmm. and he's the opposite he just wants the story to be it has to look great and i really think it does but it has to serve the story first it, and you really have to hit those emotional beats yeah. with this yeah. film and again what you guys choose to you recreate some of the newsreels from yeah. some of the testimony and then you meld, you meld the original i have to credit my editor alan Baumgart, who's also done a lot of films to me and helping um blur the lines between mm -hmm. the archival footage and the uh, the real life stuff to e we kind of boosted the quality of some of the archival stuff and mm -hmm. degraded our stuff and then found it a way to meld it and then we make that very specific transition out of the archival mm -hmm. HUAC hearing footage black and white we spread the frame out to the and right and left make the sound go into the surround sound and I and I go to color and so the audience I hope is saying oh right this is an interpretation of that of that world Mm -hmm. That's it's not a documentary. Those are kind of documentary type shots. Right. But this is a story about history. It's not history, you know. And that's I think that's really important. It's it's an interpretation. There's composite characters. They're actors. They're not the real people. Mm -hmm. You know. It's compressed to two hours. It's not 13 years. So, someone asked me how much of this film is not true. I said all of it. Realize they're actors, right? And it's a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that whole thing of. The accuracy police, it so misses the point of what's going on. These are authentic interpretations of these characters. This, mm -hmm. this film gets the essence of who they are. Completely that, authentic. That it's is not, fact. It's, that it's is well not... known, and, uh, and we didn't make that up. It's, it seems like it's so absurd what happened. It feels like you couldn't make it up, you know, uh, and, but someone might try. But it really, there was a real, this really happened. Yeah. People really did turn on each other like this. In our town, our small town, mm -hmm. writers, producers, directors, actors, friends of yours could turn on you mm -hmm. and use the fear of some external threat to destroy your life, destroy your mm -hmm. career. That's, wow, that's amazing. You know what? It could happen again. I don't know what it would take. It seems remote, but the protections against that are fragile the protections Very for free speech so. the protections to, that protect artists who want to speak up and have dissent you know uh, speak in a dissenting way that's why i think it's a film about today as much as it is mm -hmm. about that period you know daniel i've worked with so so often we we just we we're like twins who speak a language only twins understand you know i can daniel is so instantaneously on it he, the whole ba hundreds of background people will show mm -hmm. up and every single one is what i was hoping for mm -hmm. you know and and mark i've only worked uh that that was the first time i've worked with mark but now i'm doing a second film with him on uh, the lbj movie mm -hmm. What amazing taste and, and uh, what he's accomplishing on the budgets to, to get the cinematic scope and the kind of um, just the, the, yeah, the, the evoke the period in, in all of its grandeur, the, mm -hmm. those scenes with Hedda in the, in the American Legion with the red and, uh, and, and that, beautiful, the, that beautiful restaurant where Kirk Douglas mm -hmm. uh, confronts Hedda and Stripling and um, the party. I mean, they're, 
the mixture of the design elements, which again all serve the stories, evoke the period, mm -hmm. but they were also um, remind you how beautiful <laughs> some of the design yeah. elements were back then. We don't, we don't, I don't think ever about you know finding a, the the kind of line that the closed trumbo would wear or or a head hopper would wear, but my crew is really devoted. You know, you've made this shift from the lighter fare, like Meet yeah. the Parents mm -hmm. and Meet the Fockers, and, and now you've done Game Change. You're doing the LBJ movie mm -hmm. all the way. You've got this one. There's been a great shift in your storytelling. Yeah. What has doing a film like Trumbo, what did you personally take away from the experience mm -hmm. and learn about well, yourself? You know, I, I, it's a really good way of putting it. I make these films as therapy in a way, I have a, I am so driven to try to understand uh, how our civilization works and why it doesn't work better. You, you, you'd think after all, you know, all these many decades in our country of uh, this form of democracy, we would have figured it out even better than we have. So I, I like, I love stories that are about a, a an individual who has, has an uncynical passion to try to figure out how to just do better. Like, mm -hmm. is there anything we can learn about how to avoid fear-based propaganda? Is there anything we can, in, in Game Change, is there anything we can learn about how we choose our leaders? Where are the Thomas Jeffersons and the Abe Lincolns and the Abraham Lincolns of, the, why, why did we devolve instead of evolve, governmentally mm -hmm. speaking? Yeah. <laughs> Those questions, I, I can't describe the passion at which I come at them and I learned something every I didn't know anything about the motion picture alliance for the American the preservation of the American ideas I didn't know that on right across from the Hollywood Bowl at the American Legion a thousand people would meet and try to figure out how to destroy uh, you know these rabble rousers who were writing mainstream Hollywood movies like Roman Holiday, Holiday yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I needed to know. That's for me. Knowledge, learning, uh, is an is a little bit of an antidote to the anxiety I feel about how it's going. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So that's I and I. I think the audience. I hope the audience uh, can connect to any aspect of what I'm connecting to while mm -hmm. I'm making the film.